Englishman spends 11 hours trying to make cup of tea with Wi-Fi kettle. What? Data specialist Mark Rittman spent an entire day attempting to set up his new appliance so that it would boil on command. Huh. All Mark Rittman wanted was a cup of tea. Little did he know he would have to spend 11 hours waiting for his new high-tech kettle to boil the water. Rittman, a data specialist who lives in Hove, England, set about trying to make a cup of tea around 9 a.m. But thanks to his Wi-Fi enabled kettle, it wasn't long before he ran into trouble. Rittman tweeted- I don't understand why, because my sister has a fridge that will do this now. She can text her fridge from upstairs and it'll make a bottle for my niece before she makes it down the stairs. Rittman tweeted, still haven't had a first cup of tea this morning, debugging the kettle. And now Wi-Fi base station has reset Boiling water in saucepan now. Three hours later and still no tea. Mandatory recalibration caused Wi-Fi base station reset. Now port scanning network to find where the kettle is now. <laughs> like, do you need this? <laughs> yes. Do we need Wi-Fi to boil fucking water? <laughs> one, of, one of the... One of the responses we have become. One of the responses on Twitter was, "Why don't you just get a normal fucking kettle? Just get a teapot. They're like uh, ten dollars." This is the internet. When I lived alone and didn't own a fucking frying pan, I owned a teapot. This is the internet Although, of things. Although weirdly, we don't own one now, but we have a Keurig. So, this is the internet of things, writ large. This is getting yeah. way too complicated to do things that are very, very simple now. You don't even need the kettle because he had a saucepan. You can just it's boil water. Boil fucking water! Like, it's tea, man. It's not... And the dude's sitting there like, no, you don't understand. I can voice command the kettle. And I'm sitting there like, just make the fucking tea! <laughs> it's not that hard. But look, I can tell it. Boil water. We were able to do this before electricity. I said boil water. Give it a minute. It, it's boil what? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have to reset it. It, it lost connectivity for a second. Let, let me let me reset it, the router. We've reached, we've reached a weird convenience singularity <laughs> where the things we have created to make life more convenient are really inconvenient. <laughs> because they're normally they're made for shit. I'll tell you, Internet of Things, they're made for shit. Yeah. <laughs> In 11 I get, hours. Like, my sister's fridge, like, she can put up a photo album on the little video display, and I'm like, why do you need that? Why Why do you need your fridge to show a slideshow? This I is... I need to keep my food cold and maybe make ice. This is, without a doubt, the stupidest possible cyberpunk dystopia. Yeah. This is like what would happen if Douglas Adams was writing cyberpunk dystopia. This is like William Gibson and Douglas Adams just sort of squished together. You have a kettle, 11 hours, still can't make fucking tea. But, oh, it's got a voice command. Well, that doesn't help because it's not making fucking tea. Feedback from the community and school parents. Parents, mind you. Some of these suggestions came from parents. Yeah, but it is Texas, so, you know. The top 10. Number one, Donald J. Trump Elementary. 45 Which nominations. is ironic, because I don't think he passed elementary school. At number two, Robert E. Lee Elementary with 34 nominations. So you want to rename the school the exact same name. Well, that's your people that are pissed off that they want to change it. And yeah. just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, other options were the Adolf Hitler School for Friendship and Tolerance, eight nominations. I think they were trying to be clever and failed entirely. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we like Hitler? Do you think we like... Is, is and that apparently just we nominated everyone famous we could think of with the last name Lee. Yeah, Harper Lee, Russell Lee, uh, Lee Elementary. They wanted to try to still no, no David Lee Roth though. That's a shame. Other more notable but less voted names include B Movie, 
Pony McBoatface Elementary School. Adam Lanza's School of Fun. <laughs> Do you know who Adam Lanza is? No. It's the kid who shot up Sandy Hook. Lovely. Let's not name a fucking elementary school after him. That's not even funny. And one of them, of course, is Hypothetical Perfect Persons Memorial Elementary School. And Schooly McSchoolerson. Oh, and John Cena Elementary. <laughs> Bleeding Heart Liberal Interman Elementary. Just... Gee, oh. you, you really, really, really want to honor the memory of a dude who fought to own people. Do, do, do you see how some of us might find that idea abhorrent? No, they don't. What's uh, wrong with owning people? They want to name a fucking school after Donald Trump. A guy who speaks at an elementary school level. You know, they're, they're the uh, Texas GOP. They're I'm like a local dignitary. All my elementary schools in my town were named after, like, local people yeah. who did things. Wasn't there somebody fucking local from Austin who's done something of import that somebody could have nominated? That would be nice. Mine was Alice Burney Elementary School and R.V. Stahl High School. Do you know who either of those people are? No. Nope. I went to Francis J. O'Neill Elementary School. I don't, really, I don't even know who Francis J. O'Neill is. I probably should. I'm not even making this up. The Texas GOP is petitioning at their uh, their state convention. They're going to open up for a vote for uh, succession. I heard that. S secession. And every time they succeed. do that, I'm like, bye, bitches. But go. What cracks me up about it, too, is they think they're going to keep NASA. Yeah, no. Like, every time that comes up, they're like, oh, well, you'll be sorry when you lose NASA. And I'm like, you don't. You're not going to keep NASA it's if you a leave federal. the country. Yeah, it's a federal. Right. NASA is going to leave. You as are creatures. all the companies based in your state that will then lose all their federal funding and tax benefits. And they don't understand that part. Like the army. They don't get that part. Yeah. It's like they want to leave. They just don't want to leave. They want to leave, but not leave, leave. Right. <clears throat> yeah. They want to threaten to leave, so you beg them to stay. We're not. We're and really the thing not. is, all of America is kind of like, like, we're at the point where we're like Willy Wonka. Like, no, please don't. Ah, <sighs> well. And I'm sure there are people watching who are from Texas. And I'm sure you're probably very nice people. And I'm sorry that the people in charge of your state are fucking dick canoes but life is hard like the guy in charge of my state's a fucking dick canoe sucks he not for much longer he dead years at least dead man walking though dead man Two walking fucking years weeks after passing a bill allowing west virginians to drink raw milk one delegate brought the drink in to celebrate and eventually several lawmakers have gotten sick some lawmakers say it's just a coincidence and it's a stomach bug going around. But now health officials are planning and looking into how this all started. Well, but here's the thing. What does pasteurization do? Kills all the microorganisms. That's That might, milk. say, give you a stomach bug from drinking that milk. Yeah, 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 yep, yep, yep. 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 I just, I kind of, we're speaking of being bitten on the ass here, because, you know, I, I, I can't help but feel just a little, well, you got exactly what you fucking wanted, didn't you? Yeah. You, you got exactly what you wanted, and how'd that work out? You haven't been off the toilet for a week. Hope you're happy. Yeah. You're having, having a whole lot of fun there. Your stomach wants to murder you now. That's... It's just... Uh, it frustrates me so much that this, this whole deregulation, deregulate everything, because regulation is at its... Deregulate everything except what women do with their uteruses. Well, of course. What is, how, how did Dan Savage put it? They want, they want government just small enough to fit up your vagina. <laughs> 
Oh. Because it's... I just, I, I just kind of love the little ironies. The little... Yeah. The little, little tiny... The universe's way of going, you're stupid, fuck you. Yeah. You know what? Anyone getting pissy? Oh, you're being political! Guess what? I'm human! I have opinions! They have you been getting mad at us for that lately. If you don't like it, go have your own! It's you America! Ago, someone said something like, my political rants were getting exhausting. Oh no! We all need the D advises <laughs> health agency. Oh my god, that's great! And the ad is all women. <laughs> it's only women in that ad, so someone knew. Like the designer got that copy and was like, okay. In a series of posters that were clearly not proofread by anybody under the age of 30. Yukon Health and Social Services came up with lines such as, We all need the D, even me. How do you do the D? Need a little help with your daily D, and I'm in my 30s. Who knew I needed to do the D? Which... <laughs> and that ad... <laughs> man with a dog. <laughs> so, that is upsetting. <laughs> The dog, by the way, does not look happy. <laughs> the man looks very confused, and the dog looks very unhappy, so... In case you need it explained, this common slang term, the D, means the dick, and not the essential vitamin needed for bone growth. You... Fun bit of trivia about our household. While Dan's been working on his PhD... He's, he's had to work on a dissertation, which he, for the past few years, has called the D. <laughs> so he'd say, like, yeah, I've got to work on the D tonight. And oh. we would joke at the double entendre. You oh, know, I'm because we're puerile. I'm sure but that was... also understood what we were saying. I'm sure that was entertaining as hell at Christmas. So what have you been up to, Dan? Well, I've been working on my D. A yeah, lot. I don't think my family would get that. Spending a lot of time with my D. My family's really straight-laced. <laughs> UConn Health and Social Services quickly removed what's, all... What's most upsetting is, someone pointed out that might be a male baby in that picture, which makes that one even worse, because yeah. it's three women and a baby, and the headline is, we all need the D, even me. <laughs> the baby doesn't need the D. The baby doesn't need the D. Yukon Health and Social Services quickly removed all traces of the campaign from its website after BuzzFeed Canada and a number of Twitter pointed out the unintentionally hilarious poster. I'm sorry, the guy with the dog. <laughs> the guy with the dog. <laughs> and the woman who looks very, very scared of a plate of fish and some milk. Like, oh, need a little help with your daily D? Yeah. <laughs> So, you, every ad campaign, run it by a 13-year-old first. And if they giggle, you're done. You're done. If you run Start it... Start over. Yep. And yes, they don't... The black sheep of her family. Th there's, there are two different kinds of giggles. There's the, hey, that's funny giggle, and there's the, oh, God, you said something if really they, nasty. If they do the Beavis and Butthead giggle... <laughs> You start over. Do not pass go. Do not rework said campaign. Start over. D. D. Who knew I needed the D? You just know some fucking Canadian douchebag is gonna like start making take your vitamins jokes at women. I am the great Conhodio. I need the D. <laughs> I got you cold, mate, Judge tells man who insulted him on Facebook. Ju on January 12th, the... Oh, you need to read this Facebook post because I'm interested oh, yeah. to hear what these words are. The Taranaki Daily News reported that Judge Alan Roberts would be retiring at the end of the month after nine years on the bench in New Plymouth in western New Zealand. Later that day, a local resident came across a story and posted the following insightful commentary on Facebook. Quote... Lulz, 
Hope the fuckers by Friday. Ha ha. Fuka ma fucking. I, I presume that's something with a C. Yeah. With his fucking old face <laughs> at a um, saggy chin. Fuck off. I'm not exaggerating here. Here is exactly the post. You can read it for if no, you can't read it for yourself. No way. What happened read that. there? Like, it's funny, <laughs> like you just omitted all the vowels. <laughs> because some words have the vowels, but some don't, and some just have entirely the wrong letters. <laughs> <laughs> And I've seen the Lord of the Rings movies. I know this is not how they talk in New Zealand. This is not the language of Hobbiton. <laughs> Mr. LaRue apparently hoped da fucka would be good by Friday because it would mean that would mean he would not be on the bench the following week when LaRue was scheduled to appear in court for a significant amount of unpaid traffic fines. Of course, he, had he read the entire article, he would have known that Judge Roberts was not stepping down until the end of the month. According to a report yesterday in the spinoff, the transcript from Mr. LaRue's appearance before Judge Roberts on January 21st is now available. That report posted image of the transcript. This is a slightly corrected and censored version. The court, Mr. LaRue, you have been summoned to court to deal these outstanding fines. You know that, don't you? Ah, uh, yes, sir. Finds outstanding $6,244. I'm going to send you to community work. Do you want to say anything? Happy with that, says the defendant. Mr. Registrar, would you just show Mr. LaRue that? Open it up for him. It's a posting you created, isn't it? Defendant, yeah, I was very intoxicated. Read it out loud. Defendant says, fuck off. Read it word for word. Your post, please. The bottom one, go... Go point it out to him, Mr. Registrar. Please, the defendant, this one? Yes. Read the post above it full. The court. Who were you talking about? <laughs> this is like a principal talking to a kid. I was talking to my mate, aren't I? No, no. Who are you talking about? Well, I, I, I'm guessing in re respect to this post. Who are you talking about when you said that fucking old C with the saggy old chin? Well, I guess I'm talking to you, sir. Thank you. And I, I don't really know what to say, but I do apologize. No, no, you don't have to say anything. That's what you thought. He, <laughs> he's just rags into... So, right, you're otherwise indolent, aren't you? Bone idol. Okay, one, outstanding fine, 6,244 remitted. Two, substitution, 300 hours community work. Work off your laughter in the cells while we get the order typed. Um, in the cells. I do apologize for that. Damage done, Mr. LaRue. Don't give a toss. I love this judge. Yeah. So don't... Also, don't. look into phonics. Yes. Yes. You can be hooked on them, and it's not illegal. It's not illegal to get hooked on phonics. Maybe if you were able to read the traffic signs, you wouldn't incur so many tickets. Los hop de fuckers! Bitty Brad Brad, ha ha, fuck up and fuck it. I feel like all of Brad Pitt's lines in the movie Snatch were written by this. <laughs> Gotta take a shot. Exactly. Gotta take a shot. Like that's what I'm hearing in my head, trying to read that. It's just fucking Brad Pitt from Snatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's... it's it's written in Traveler. <laughs> Nebraska, fifty three. Crawled on floor, called cat a bitch. Well, look, maybe that cat's a bitch. <laughs> August 17th, Nebraska man mistakenly ate some of his adult children's pot brownies, told police that he was, quote, tripping as he crawled on the floor, randomly used profanities, and called the family cat a bitch. According to the incident report, why was that an incident report? <laughs> That just sounds like a fun old <laughs> Cops say, Michael... Did the cat call the cops? <laughs> cops say, Michael Golan, 53, ate four pot brownies he found in the back seat of a car that his children had borrowed earlier four. Tuesday. Um, Is that a lot? I don't know. I've never had pot brownies. I don't know either. 
<laughs> Around 7.30 p.m., Golhead's wife told Omaha police the couple were watching television when Michael started getting bad anxiety. She tried to contact her children to determine what was in the brownies, but failed to reach them. While paramedics responded to an overdose, they found Golan's vitals in the normal range. Michael was displaying odd behavior, crawling on the floor, calling the cat a bitch, randomly using profanities, and saying he feels like he's tripping. It's the calling the cat a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so just imagine, imagine your dad suddenly stops watching TV and gets up, crawls around on the floor and starts screaming profanities at the family pet. <laughs> I mean, except for the crawling around on the floor, I had seen that. <laughs> People often scream profanities at the family pets. And the one time I saw my dad really, really drunk, all he did was ramble on and on about the merits of clean sand. <laughs> What? My dad worked in construction, and oh. apparently clean sand is the most important thing. I, I don't know. I'm just, he uh, had a lot of Manhattans at my cousin's wedding. Oh, yeah, yeah. hello, police. Oh, yeah, my husband, she, he's not doing so good today, don't you know? Oh, no. He's, <laughs> well, he's calling the family cat a bitch. I'm, and I'm, she's not. She's the sweetest cat. Oh, she's just a, just a great big old sweetheart. Oh, you know. Oh yeah, she's she, oh yeah, she's she's just That's a sweet real controversy that he's been pretending to like this cat. <laughs> he's been hiding his seething hatred for this cat all this time, and now it's out. <laughs> now their marriage is over. They're getting to the truth of the matter. He has revealed his hatred. <laughs> Don't leave your pot just laying the fuck around where your parents will find it. Especially if your dad just like, oh, brownies! You got it! You got it! Drug-laced fake goods where your parents can find it. Because I get to, my dad's routine every night before bed, we always had various Entenmann's products in the house. And he would have, like, an apple turnover or a piece of coffee cake and then go to bed. So, God forbid, we left some shit like that around, like... You kept scraping your dad off the ceiling with a rake. Also, my mom was a substance abuse counselor, so we would be in shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, it would be a fun day at the Dinahan house. West Michigan substitute teacher fired for using anatomical word during lesson. If you ask Allison Witt why she was fired from Harper Creek Middle School, she will tell you it's because she uttered the word vagina. Yes, I did say that word, and I was saying in the context of art history, I wasn't being vulgar. Substitute art teacher claims she said it to a room full of eighth graders trying to explain historical interpretations of Georgia O'Keeffe paintings. But to school officials went across the line and violated school policy. What policy? Um, I think it's it's uh, down here later. Okay, Qu quote from the school handbook indicating teachers are required to get an advanced approval when discussing any form of reproductive health. So, saying the word vagina, you have to get permission before you say the any proper form of reproductive <sighs> health. Are you kidding me? Uh, do we just want teen pregnancy to run rampant? Apparently, well, STDs. Where the hell else are you going to get all those low information voters, Tara? <sighs> Is this a public school? Yes. Oh my God. You know what? It's and it's completely yeah yeah yeah. Big Lebowski quote vagina. I'm mad about this. It's not funny. Yeah, it's it's completely legitimate in terms of discussing George O'Keefe to say the word vagina because she was painting. To be really fair, you're probably actually looking for the word labia. Labia, yeah. Well, that that would probably count too. But I can get, like, there. there is a large percentage of people that think that vagina is the plurality of the area down there. And it's not. But, you know. 
yeah, if you're discussing George O'Keefe, that's, I mean... You can't really avoid it. No. It's right there. Yeah. I mean, it, it, unless you've never seen one, but if you look at George O'Keefe paintings, right now people are fur fu furiously Googling George O'Keefe going, what? Is she supposed to say hoo-ha? But Jingo? Like, this is... Your lady flower. This call is it, fucking Call it grade. your lady flower. By the time flower. I was in eighth grade, I had taken two years of mandatory health class where they teach you about the reproductive system. Mm -hmm. And they show really stupid movies made in the 70s about how masturbation is okay. <sighs> And you watch the miracle of life, and at least two girls run out of the room to throw up. And <laughs> eighth grade, by eighth grade, I had taken two years of this class. These are eighth graders who are not allowed to have a grown up say an anatomical word to them. Only in the context of a approved sexual education course. Anywhere else in the building, you cannot say vagina. Presumably, you can't say penis as well. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if that was not the case. Probably not. Probably because not. America has a big old fucking problem with vaginas. They do. We goddamn love penises. We got a big old problem with vaginas. Well, Like, apparently we just want teenage pregnancy and STDs to take over America. We're voting for one for the Republican nominee for president. He's well, a yeah. walking STD. Well, yes, like I said, where else do you think they get low information voters? Yeah, I guess. In 20 years, they'll be handing over their campaign donations like clockwork. That's just how they work. You gotta make, you gotta make more, more poppers. That's just how it works. That's just, I, I, I'm not even offended. I'm sad because you're fucking these kids up. Yep. You're teaching them that there's a stigma around genitals. You right. should only ever talk about your genitals when a grown-up approves of it. Right, and that you have no need to learn about them. No, they're horrible things. Or the proper care and maintenance thereof. You need approval before you examine your own genitals. That's, talk that's to, a disservice. Talk to someone in authority before you even acknowledge the fact that you have something in your crotch. Pound in it. Pounding it, just, yeah. just pounding it. Just, I mean, to just be honest, pounding it. Seen this coming. Pounding it, just, just pounding it. Like if they called us, we could have told them they should have seen this coming. This is. <laughs> they would have given us this idea and would have been like, "That's great. People are going to use it for porn. You should just be prepared for that." I Whoa! What's going on here, Thunderdome? You see Peggy hiding behind the curtain there? Yes. Over the past few weeks, there's been an uptick of reports of people using the kiosk to access porn in public, even pleasuring themselves while doing so. Dudes do that on the subway, actually, more than you'd expect. I mean... But be honest, like, if someone had pitched this idea to you, what would be the first thing you would say? How are we going to stop them from jerking off? Exactly. Like, if they'd consulted somebody like us, who are professionals in Horror. the lowest common denominator, in, in human we would have been like, idiocy. that's a great idea. Put parental controls on it. Yeah, because they're going to jerk off. Yeah. They're going to be jerking off. That's That's what's... How did it... have the walls of those little booths squeegeed really often? <laughs> I mean, how did they not see this coming? Literally. <laughs> Cuz everybody else could cuz the booths are open. If you knew, have you seen Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York City? Yeah, he's a little strange. He's an enormous dork. Yeah. He's like a 6 foot 8 dork. So, you know, I can kind of see him not 
really seeing this coming. I'm kind of I'm kind of annoyed at these guys because look, gentlemen, and even ladies, ladies, gentlemen, don't tell me you can't jerk off without porn, okay? Don't tell me you absolutely positively have to have porn available to pleasure yourself. Dude, some people can't even get it up without porn. That's, it's a problem, actually. Like, the more hardcore feminists want poor porn banned, partially because they feel it degrades women, but partially because it's starting to give men unrealistic ideas about sex, and real sex doesn't do anything for some men anymore because of porn. It's not like porn when they have sex with a real person, and so it doesn't do anything for them. It's not, I'm not saying it's everybody, it's a small subset of the population, but it is a thing. It, man, it, but then again, some people can't get it up if they don't have uh, a metal rod shoved up their urethra or a yoga ball to puncture. Like, yeah, people are weird. Everybody got their something. You, you just, they should have known they should, should, someone should have warned them. Uh, yeah, this is another case where you have to run your ideas by a 14 year old. Yeah, a 14 year old would be like, can I go to the booby site? Yeah. That'd be the first thing they ask. Dude, can I get porn on this? Like every corporate entity in America should have a 14 year old on staff every that they just run one. ideas by. Every single And if one. that 14 year old giggles. Bad idea. Drug testing expert was high for eight years. That's not what they mean by drug testing. So I don't think you should sample all of them. <laughs> Sonia Farak handled around 30,000 criminal cases, which could be called into question after she admitting tampering oh with evidence. Sonia Farak, who worked for Amherst Laboratory, which tested drug samples for police, was on methamphetamines, ketamine, cocaine, LSD, and other drugs during most of her time there, even when she testified in court. How do you do science on all those things? How do you do anything on all those things? The number of criminal cases affected by Farak's misconduct could rival the approximately 40,000 cases thrown in question by the actions of Annie Dugan, who worked at a state drug lab in, in uh, Boston. Dugan was sub sentenced to at least three years in prison in 2013 after pleading guilty to faking test results. In this case, uh, Farak was on the drugs. Farak admitted ingesting lab standards, drug samples used as benchmarks to test against substances submitted oh by police. Oh my god, police. I thought I was joking. What? When I said that's not what they mean by drug testing. Well, no, she's testing, she was testing the substances, all right. Yup, that's acid, all right. During her own grand jury testimony, she admitted she once smoked crack before a 2012 state police accreditation inspection of the now-closed lab. She also testified she manufactured crack cocaine for her personal use in the lab. Oh my God. How did nobody ever notice this? Well, they started to actually. Uh, another article I read said um, she started running out of those stand. What they do is when they call these things standards, you get like a chemical manufacturer will send out these testing substances to labs. They're spe specifically made, they're controlled substance. They're able to say, you know, there's this pure cocaine they make and you can test it against, say, yep, this is cocaine, it has the same chemical makeup. She started running out of those. Oh, so what she, would, what she did was she started waiting for them to send in new evidence. And then she would start fucking snorting the evidence. And her coworkers started noticing she was really anxious when evidence started coming into the lab. She would pay, she would be like hovering around waiting for evidence to arrive. That's how they started sniffing her how out. How did they miss that she was ripped out of her mind all the time? Though? I don't know. Like, I mean, kudos to you for finding a way to get tons and tons of free drugs. But how did nobody notice 
that the Labby was ripped out of her fucking mind. Well, the big problem here is all of those 30,000 cases she worked on. Might and now be delegitimized. 30,000 people who may be guilty of any number of assorted crimes, some violent, some not, we don't know. But all of those are going to have to go back to court. And some people could walk because... Right. State, Guilty people could walk. Innocent people could have been in jail. State evidence tampering. Wow. I maintain, how is she doing all that? Like, is she a fucking Asgardian? <laughs> how do you tolerate that amount of shit? Meth, F, uh, LSD, coke, ketamine. Because the thing is, those all do different things. Special K ain't nothing to fuck with. Like, it's not like they're all uppers. Or they're all, like, they, you're being pulled in a lot of different, like, even if you're not on them all at the same time. Have you ever heard the term K-hole? Yeah. Don't fuck with ketamine. That shit is bad for you. Yeah. Isn't that that's, like a horse tranquilizer or something? It's a ve veterinary tranquilizer, yeah. Yeah. This, this is, so this story, what you're hearing here, you're sitting here going, holy shit. Dude, detox for her is not going to be pleasant. Massachusetts are going to have to deal with this for months, if not years, to come. Yeah. This, this story is not going away. Damn mess. Holy shit. God, I hope she had nothing to do with any of the whitey bulger shit. Probably not. Amherst is not is in Boston. Uh, just let's hope she wasn't at, like the state crime lab, was she? <laughs> I, I think so, yeah. Jesus, fuck. Amherst Laboratory. Right, but is that like the state crime lab? They get they use it for all different ones. Okay. Fuck. Now, how did she think she was... That, that's, that's the one that's blowing my mind. How did she think no one was going to notice? How did... Nobody did notice forever. Was there like... A thousand cases. No supervision of this person. She was goddamn right. Nobody noticed. She was making crack in the lab. Making her own crack. No one saw shit. Do you think maybe, possibly, perhaps, the person working with the highly illegal substances might need some, some supervision? A little, little bit. Maybe, just, maybe a camera. Just, just a little. Just. Maybe like a log for things. Eight years she got away with this. Eight, Jesus. Eight years. Yeah, that is a thunderstorm of shit. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman on, on your screens right now, this is James Weeks. He is the, uh, he was candidate for the Libertarian Party chairman. Now, at this point, people associate the Libertarian Party with sort of the fringe. And that that that's that's, you know, one of those things they've tried to escape. So, so this year they had, you know, Gary Johnson's a former Republican governor. They, they they tried to be, you know, beef up their credentials. And then this Just happens. say it. he came to Florida. Just say it. He stepped into Florida and he lost it. Whatever it is, I can already tell. I don't know what's going on, but I can already tell that's I, I sent you the link in IRC. And the music starts. And the clapping begins. <laughs> James Weeks, chairman, and, and the, the, the crowds are like, okay, we're gonna do this. We're young. We're hip. We're modern. We're good. And then... The jacket comes off, and and then, then more came off. Lots more came off. And the crowd's not with him. The, the crowd's not with him. No, they're not, sir. I wouldn't be either. They're 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 not they're they're not they're not with him on this thing. But this happened. In America, in a major, I thought when we had Donald Trump in a Republican debate defending the size of his penis, I thought we had, this is as far as we're going to go.
No one's stopping him. No one's even trying to stop him. No, but, but then, then came the Libertarian Party convention. This, this is, this is a political party of uh, what's considered a large and valid. They're, they're expecting Gary Johnson to at least get 10, if not 15% of the vote. This happened. <laughs> okay we're gonna cut costs no matter what first to go clothing it's like you ever say i've been in arrested development where joe really want he's it's, we he's the magician we demand to be taken seriously yes yeah that that's that's what it, that's that that's been their platform for what a decade they've been fighting that for that just to be have like on the same level as the gop and the and the democrats for, okay, first of all, the guy apparently had this planned out. Nobody knew about it, yet everyone's covering their eyes, laughing. No one's doing anything about it. No one... You kind of have to vet these people. You kind of have to make sure that the, 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 the candidate for your party's chair is not going to hop up on stage and go all full Monty on your ass political porn it's a, that's what this is now we have transcended to the next level of awful pornography and you can't say oh no that's not gonna be a thing this is real this is what exactly what it is too and and even better people, <laughs> oh am i missing something <laughs> yes you did people have been have been speculating about this but not only does he strip on his shoulder right shoulder is a tattoo of what many people looked and went is that the iron cross which that's a twofer uh naked and nazi <laughs> so now lots of people are going that's that's not the iron that's so not Sure, the fuck look like an iron cross to everyone in America. Who, you don't, <laughs> even if it wasn't the iron cross, just just hypothetically, who the fuck in America is gonna go? Hmm. No, that couldn't be the. I'm going to Google every possible permutation of the iron cross symbol and find one that fits a more happy. No, they're gonna go. That's a fucking Nazi. Stripper Nazi. Stripper Nazi. That's not the. I've never been to a strip club, but I'm willing to bet the outfits they put on. One of them's not Hitler. One of them. <laughs> An attractive college girl does not have the Hitler mustache coming out doing the march and trying to strip from that. You're giving them ideas, though. You, uh, you're giving someone. Someone is watching this somewhere, going, "Hey." Some girl named Cinnamon is going. Yes, that's what I need. I will corner the market. <laughs> Yeah, you, oh my gosh, can you imagine how many rednecks would fly to that trip, that strip club? I mean, across country just to see the stripping Nazi? Ugh. So, yeah, this, this is, is not how the Libertarian Party wanted things to go. This is the third party. So we have Trump, who everyone was comparing to Hitler. Yeah. But now we have a stripper, um, war German veteran supporting the Third Reich. On the third party. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I... This, this isn't much better. I mean, at least Trump didn't do that. This this is not what they wanted. I mean, they were so mad. Libertarians were so mad. They could not figure out which conspiracy to blame. They were that mad. <laughs> yeah. It, it was... And, and the thing was, this is all anyone talked about. Yeah. Well, okay, that's understandable but this is not a position where okay we decided yesterday you're the guy let's see that this had to have been a long time in the planning for this guy to be in this position many people had to give him the thumbs up yeah but no one talk, like sat down and talked to him at lunch and like really got a grasp of the guy what his sense of humor and his personality was the the absolute worst thing that happened at the last republican convention was Clint Eastwood yelled at a chair yeah oh yeah that's not nearly that was kind of one of those what the hell? But no one really went. 
This is one of those things. I mean, because Saturday morning, go. I was reading the news going into this. They were talking about Gary Johnson, his credibilities. Bob Weld wants to be his running mate. The party isn't really kind of sure about. You know, the normal wonky kind of political stuff. Right. But after the weekend was over, all anybody was... Man, did you see the naked fat guy? <laughs> that was it. That We're talking politics, sir. Boom! Naked politic porn. Sir, this is a serious discussion. Big man boobs on the political stage. Well, the sad thing is, it has to be a serious discussion because this fucking electric... It does. This is not like some offshoot small town, some guy trying to run for school board or something, which would have been worse, by the way. <laughs> this is huge. <laughs> you remember in 2008 when the only thing we had to worry about was Sarah Palin just saying something stupid? Yeah. That's it. Oh, that That's was the gold. Problem. That was the golden age. This bad, and we were worried about that too. Now shit's no. no. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I, I gladly listened to that again. At least we knew that. Now was bad. Weeks claimed he did this quote on a dare. <laughs> That's even worse. What's what's gonna happen if he moves up in politics and advances? Like other people are gonna dare him to pass laws. Well, then that that's North Carolina actually so hr2 was a dare yeah that's the one thing this is the splorch ladies and gentlemen it is an egg laying ovipositor dildo yep. it is a floppy well it can't be too floppy it is a tube and you take these these Gelatin egg, gelatin type egg things. Yeah, and you shove it in the thing. And you, and you shove the thing in you. And it impregnates you with a jelly alien egg. I don't know why. I don't know what you do with it afterward. I don't know if the eggs are reusable. You know, what you do in the privacy of your own home is fine. You enjoy yourself. I'm just saying, if I'm dating someone and we get back to their place and they say, hey, let's get a little bit interesting tonight. And this comes out and date's over. <laughs> That's it, huh? That's a deal breaker. Thank you for a lovely evening. Goodbye. The owner insists on only being referred to as Lone Wolf. Oh, okay. Well, apparently he's a Native American, so maybe that's his name. Yeah. And not just, he's maybe not just an internet idiot. I feel like they're, like, there are better uses for this. Like, like, could you make it put in one of those menstrual cups? Then it would be really useful product. <laughs> the egg, I, mean, I guess you're just going to uh, test that egg and fine, but I feel like we could put this to better use. Uh, so anyway. Could you put like Easter eggs in there? That would be the <laughs> <laughs> 